Welcome. Thank you for joining us for today's lesson. This is part of a 13-lesson series brought to you by the Food Trust Nutrition Educators. The Food Trust works to ensure that everyone has access to affordable, nutritious food and the information to make healthy choices. In this series, we'll be covering topics such as how to shop at a farmer's market, stretching your food dollars, storing fruits and vegetables, and more. Join us every other week as we share nutrition information from my plate, as well as tips and tricks to eating more healthy food at every meal. Each bi-weekly lesson will be followed by a recipe featuring a seasonal ingredient you can find at your local farmer's market or grocery store. Meet our nutrition educators, who you'll get to know through our lessons or recipe demonstrations. We're excited to have you with us. again for joining us. Please fill out our anonymous survey at the end of this video so that we can find out more about who we're reaching and how to serve our audience best. We hope you come back for our next lesson. See you then! Hello, my name is Shalice and I'm a nutrition educator here with the Food Trust. A little bit about us, we work hard to make sure people have access to delicious, nutritious food, no matter where they live. We also provide nutrition education by using MyPlate, which is the basis for every lesson that we teach. So here's just a little overview of the things you want to make sure that you know going forward as you watch our different lessons. For one, you'll notice that half of the plate contains fruits and vegetables. You want to keep this in mind for every single meal. Now, while it can be difficult to think for fruits for dinner and vegetables for breakfast, there are a lot of creative ways in which you can combine both of those to make something delicious as well as nutritious. As you watch our lessons, we'll give you some more uh, ideas on to how to make that happen. Along with that, we're looking for six ounces of greens every single day. So that can be half of it whole grains and half of it are refined grains. Whole grains, for instance, are oatmeal, brown rice, quinoa, whole wheat bread. Those are great sources of a nice whole grain. Now, of course, we'll explain a little bit more as to why that's good for us, but you want to keep in mind first things first is that it's really great for our heart. So, when you are choosing your grains, you want to make half of your grains whole. Meaning that three ounces of the day, you want to try to make sure you're getting a whole grain and you'll find balance between the ones that you like and the refined grains that you prefer. Along with that, we're looking for six ounces of protein daily. With six ounces of protein, we want to make sure that we want to mix up how we get our protein. There are two types, animal-based protein and plant-based protein. With animal-based protein, it provides a great source of iron, which is super awesome for our bodies, but it doesn't provide any fiber. Versus plant-based protein, where the iron is a little bit harder to digest, but it provides us with fiber. That's why you want to make sure you're getting a nice balance of both. When you're choosing the size of meat, you want it to be the size of your palm of your hand. When you're choosing your plant-based protein, you want to at least get like a cup of beans, maybe even a fourth cup of nuts and seeds. Just make sure you're reading the labels and see what serving size is going to work for your protein goals. Last thing we have is dairy. With dairy, we want to make sure we're getting three cups of it daily. This is a great source of calcium. But if you don't eat dairy products for whatever reason, there are other options as well. There's non-dairy milk, there's kale, and other dark leafy green vegetables that count as a vegetable on my plate, but also counts as our calcium source as well. So you can kind of um, 
get two different food groups covered with one vegetable. Along with that, just even fortified orange juice as well as fortified bread that'll have calcium in it. So if you choose to eat dairy products, milk, cheese, and yogurt. If you choose to eat non-dairy, non-dairy milk, dark leafy green vegetables, and fortified products. Thank you so much for tuning in to today's lesson. We look forward to seeing you in the next one. Bye. Hi, I'm Jen and I'm a SNAP and nutrition educator at The Food Trust and I'm excited to be back today to talk all about fruits and vegetables. Today I will also be making a recipe featuring some ingredients that you can find at your local farmer's market right now. There are a lot of reasons to eat fruits and vegetables. Not only do they taste great, but they also are full of vitamins and minerals. They're also low fat or fat free. Another thing is that they're high in fiber and they can also help prevent certain diseases. Do you know how many cups of fruits and vegetables we need in a day? Our goal is to eat five cups of fruits and vegetables each day. That's two cups of fruit and three cups of vegetables. And usually a cup is about the size of your fist. So that can be something like a small or medium sized apple or something like half a grapefruit. We also like to say eat a rainbow. So it's really important to get a variety of all the different colors of fruits and vegetables because we associate them with having different vitamins and minerals as well. Not only that, but all forms count, meaning our fresh fruits and vegetables are giving us those vitamins and nutrients and fiber, but so are our frozen goods, our canned goods, and our dried fruits and vegetables as well. Fresh is best for flavor and nutrients when in season. Our frozen fruits and vegetables also have good nutrients because they are frozen after they've been picked. Our canned fruits and vegetables are also convenient and have a long shelf life when unopened. Same goes for our dry fruits and vegetables that have a long shelf life and can last a really long time in our pantries. As I've mentioned, it's really important to get a variety of all the colors of fruits and vegetables in our diet. Every color has different vitamins and minerals that we associate with them. So having a variety ensures that we get the most benefits and nutrients in our produce. So here we have a chart with the different colors of the rainbow. Is there a fruit or a vegetable in a color category that you'd like to try out? We also have a handout that talks about the different fruits and vegetables and what color category they also fall in. So I'm gonna go ahead and fill out this chart with some fruits and vegetables. So I've gone ahead and added some grapefruit, some peas, and some broccoli into our rainbow. So we have our red category and our green category filled out, but we're still missing all these other colors. So I'm gonna try and add more fruits and vegetables to make it more colorful so that we're getting all those vitamins and minerals. So something that I have right here is a banana. So I really like bananas because they're super convenient. You just kind of grab them and you don't have to prepare them or do anything much to them. So usually when we see bananas, we see the color yellow. So we might think that we could put it in a yellow category, but when we peel it, the banana inside is actually white. So this one ends up falling into our white and brown category right there. Other colors that we can try and add now are our blue and our yellow colors as well. So something that's blue that I like to snack on too is my blueberries. So I'm gonna go ahead and add this color right here. So we have just to fill out the yellow and the orange category group. So, and we can also add a lot more. If you don't like these fruits and vegetables, there's a list of all the different things that you can try out there. So something else that I like are canned peaches. So canned peaches um, are a good form of getting those vitamins and minerals and some fiber as well. But when you're getting those canned goods, you want to watch out for those preservatives because they can be high in sugars and salt. So if you are getting your canned fruits, you want to watch out and look for the ones that say 100% juice or in water. If you can't find those and you have the syrup, heavy syrup or light syrup, you want to rinse them out with cold water to cut some of those sugars out. So this one falls into my yellow and orange category right here. During summertime, you're going to find a lot of watermelon, especially at the farmer's market. 
Um, every time I go to my local farmer's market, I actually end up finding a lot of these. So I'm going to put this right here into my red colored group. But I also want to make sure that I'm getting some vegetables that are in those color categories too. So something that is a vegetable that can fit into my orange yellow category can be things like our pumpkins or our squashes. So I have some winter squash right over here. So I'm going to put it here. So it's starting to look fuller. Another thing that can go into the purple or blue category are things like eggplants. Right here, I actually don't have any green fruit, but some green fruit ideas can be things like kiwis or green grapes. So I'm going to go ahead and back that here into this group category too. So it's starting to look fuller. And then some white vegetables can be things like my cauliflower. So I'm going to add that right there. Potatoes also fall into that white and brown category. So we're going to put that right there. So already we can see that we've added a lot of different colors of fruits and vegetables into our rainbow. So that's something that you can try at home. If you're a caregiver, try offering children fruit and vegetables as snacks. They also will learn from watching you eat a variety of fruits and vegetables. So if you eat them too, they'll follow along as well. so much for tuning in to today's lessons about eating fruits and vegetables. So let's recap a little bit about what you learned today. We learned that you're looking for two cups of fruit and three cups of vegetables every single day. And the great thing is all forms count, fresh, canned, frozen, or dry. Now of course there's pros and cons to each one, so let's go over that a little bit. For instance, eating fresh fruit is fantastic. That's when it's the most delicious and sometimes the most nutritious. Now I say sometimes because often if we're getting them, for instance, an orange from Florida and we live in Pennsylvania, when that's picked, it's slowly losing its nutrition on the way to us. So while it's still delicious, it's not as nutritious sometimes as it could be. So we want to make sure that we're getting the fresh fruits and vegetables that make the most sense for our lifestyle. Now along with that, frozen is a great choice. It's picked and it's frozen at peak freshness, which means that it's gonna keep all of its nutritional value. So that's gonna be wonderful as well. But you can't use frozen greens to make a salad, for instance. So that's where fresh can come into play. So that's fresh, that's frozen. Let's talk about canned. When it comes to canned fruits and vegetables, we wanna make sure that we're getting canned vegetables with little to no sodium added. If there's any sodium in it, you wanna give it a little bit of a rinse, three times or more to get off all of that extra sodium and liquid that you may not want within your meal for the day. If you're getting canned fruit, you want to make sure that you're getting it stored in 100% fruit juice and not syrup. Syrup just adds extra sugar that we just don't need because fruit is already sweet and delicious enough. So when it comes to getting our cups of fruits and vegetables, there are a lot of different ways to do it. When you eat dried fruit and vegetables, you only need a fourth of a cup that's gonna expand and count as half of a cup of fruits and vegetables since it's more condensed. So these can be our raisins, dried raspberries, it can be kale chips, all those things are gonna work in terms of getting your cups of fruits and vegetables. Along with that, if you choose anything that spits in the palm of your hand, that's gonna count as one cup. For instance, this is some diced mangoes. And as you see, there's not a lot of pieces here. And this still counts as one cup of fruit. If you have two of these, you've already reached your goal. When you're getting canned, one of the other benefits, besides the fact that it stays good for a very long time, is that you can see the nutrition facts label and see what counts as a serving. In here, there's three and a half servings of fruit because there's only about one half of a cup for a serving. So in this can, you can get three and a half cups of fruits, and of fruits for the day. 
So you just, again, want to make sure it's stored in 100% fruit juice and not syrup. Thank you so much for attending today's lesson. We look forward to seeing you in our next one.